Morning, everyone. Um, today's reading is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 22, 23. Sorry. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything, for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Praise be to God's word. Thank you so much, Christine, for bringing us our reading this morning. And good morning, everybody. It is great to be speaking to you today. If we haven't met before, my name is Sophie, and I'm on the staff team here at St. Saviour's. And as Alan mentioned, I'm continuing this morning our series, Sit walk stand and we're going to be thinking about the theme of inheritance and looking at this passage that Christine read to us and we're going to be thinking about the inheritance that is given to us because of the death and the resurrection of Jesus but first let me pray for us as we start father we thank you that you are here by your spirit and we pray that you would speak to us as we explore this passage and this theme of inheritance together and we pray this in jesus name amen well i wonder what you think about when you hear the word inheritance i think that there are commonly two understandings two uses for this word Inheritance can mean the characteristics and features that are passed from a parent to their child, genetic inheritance. I have lost count of the number of times that I have been told how much Ella looks like her dad, Simon. And if I'm being completely honest with you, I was a bit put out at first because let's be honest, I did do all of the hard work carrying her for nine months. But I have to admit that I do see it too and I would not change Ella for the world. I actually have pictures of Ella and Simon um, when we were toddlers about the same age as Ella which should come up on the screen. The question is, who was cuter? No, joking, joking, you don't have to answer that. And looking at each of us at a similar age to Ella is now, there's no denying that Ella has inherited quite a lot of his physical features, I can admit it. Another common understanding of the word inheritance relates to receiving money, land, or possessions when someone has died. Some of us here will have received an inheritance when a friend or a family member has passed away. We lost my nana a couple of years ago, and Simon and I received an inheritance from her. But whether we know it or not, each and every one of us here has received an inheritance, not because of anything that we have done, but because of what God has done for us. We have received an inheritance because of the death and the resurrection of Jesus. It is because of the cross that this inheritance is given to us. But what is this inheritance that we receive? Well, our, our passage highlights three aspects of our inheritance, and the first is this. We receive 
an inheritance of hope. Our passage says this, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which God has called you. In our passage, Paul, the writer of Ephesians, tells us that we receive an inheritance of hope. But what is the hope to which God has called us? Well, I think that we can often hear the word calling and think about maybe a particular vocation that we might have. I believe that I am called to be a priest in the Church of England. You might feel called to be a teacher or to work in the charity sector or business or to focus on raising your children or you may not have a strong sense of vocational calling at the moment. I think that what Paul is referring to here is a wider and broader calling that we all have as followers of Jesus. And we need to look beyond our passage to understand what it is. I had a brief search of the word call in the Bible, and here are some of the references that I found in letters also written by the Apostle Paul in the New Testament. We are called to belong to Jesus. We are called into fellowship with God. We are called to be his holy people. We are called to live in the grace of Christ. So when Paul talks about the hope to which God has called us, this is the calling to which he refers, which is rooted in our relationship with God, made possible because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Because of the cross, we can know with a sure certainty that we belong to Jesus, that we are able to have fellowship, relationship with God, that we are made holy by his blood, that we can receive his grace. In his commentary on the book of Ephesians, John Stott explains that this is an inheritance that we receive the moment that we put our faith in Jesus. This is our inheritance of hope. So first, we receive an inheritance of hope. And second, we receive an inheritance of riches. Our passage says this. May you know the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Well, I have good news and I have bad news for you this morning. I'm afraid to say that you are not going to receive a letter outlining all of the earthly riches that you will receive because of the death of Jesus. I am sorry to disappoint. God promises a lot of things, but earthly riches is not one of them. But the good news is that you will receive an inheritance of riches far greater than anything in this world, reserved for you in the age to come. In 1 Peter, these riches are described as an inheritance that can never perish, nor spoil, nor fade, kept in heaven for you. While the hope to which God has called you is an inheritance that we receive the moment that we put our faith in Jesus, these riches are a future inheritance that await us in the age to come. Stott explains that exactly what this inheritance will be is beyond our capacity to imagine. However much or little we have in this life, we can know, we know that it perishes. We know that it spoils. We know that it fades. We know that we can't take it with us. But we can be assured that there is an inheritance of riches that awaits us in the age to come, that will never perish nor spoil nor fade, which is beyond our capacity to imagine. This is good news. So first, we receive an inheritance of hope. Second, we receive an inheritance 
of riches. And finally, we receive an inheritance of power. Our passage says this, may you know his incomparably great power for us who believe. While the hope to which God has called you is an inheritance that we receive the moment that we put our faith in Jesus and the riches of his glorious inheritance await us in the age to come, his incomparably great power is an inheritance that is available to you and to me today. Stott describes it as spanning the time between the two. And in our passage, Paul expands on exactly what this inheritance of power is. He explains that the same power that rose Jesus from the dead is available to you and to me today. The same power that seated Jesus at the right hand of the Father is available to you and to me today. The same power that is far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come, is available to you and to me today. I feel like we need to take a moment to let that sink in. We have this inheritance of power, which we can access by the power of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Nicky Gumbel, the former vicar of Holy Trinity Brompton, tells the story of a time when he was asked to take the funeral of a man who lived on the streets and who used to beg outside HTB each week. And he was surprised that at this funeral, a lot of the man's family were present. And he found out that this man who lived on the streets and who begged outside HTB had in fact been given a huge inheritance. He could have lived an entirely different lifestyle if he'd chosen to receive it. And yet he chose not to. He chose to continue to live his life as he knew it, however hard that might have been for him rather than making the most of the inheritance that had been given to him. Because of the cross, we have access to an inheritance of hope and of riches and of power. It is ours for the taking. All that we need to do is to choose to receive it. On the 3rd of July, 2011, I made the decision to follow Jesus. And when I did, I received an inheritance of hope. I encountered the presence of God by his spirit, and I received his forgiveness and his mercy and his grace made possible for me because of the cross. And in that moment, I realized everything that I had been missing up until that point. I realized how broken and how lost and how poor in spirit I had been. I made the decision to receive the inheritance of hope that had been given to me that was available for me. And making that decision to follow Jesus remains the best decision that I have ever made in my life. Perhaps you're here today and you've never made that decision to follow Jesus. Know that there is an inheritance of hope that is available to you, not because of anything that you have done, nor because of anything that you could possibly do, but because of what Jesus has done for you on the cross because of his great love for you. All that you need to do is to choose to receive it. Perhaps you've been a follower of Jesus for many years and you know the inheritance that has been given to you. But I wonder whether each of us here fully live in the light of that inheritance. Someone once said this, even if we know that we have an inheritance from God, we often don't access it or make the most of it. 
Earlier this month, my mum came to visit for the day and we were talking about Strictly Come Dancing, which is a typical topic of conversation in the Rayside household at the moment. And she mentioned that she often misses a fair bit of it on a Saturday night because she goes to and from the kitchen making her dinner. And I happen to know, as she does, that she has BBC iPlayer integrated into her TV. So I suggested that she watch live TV via iPlayer so that she could pause it instead of missing it. And she's already said what a difference that that has made to her. In fact, she texted me just yesterday evening saying that she was watching Strictly via iPlayer so that she could pause it to make her chilly. She had access to it the whole time, but she wasn't making the most of it. We have access to an inheritance of hope and of riches and of power But do we fully grasp it? Do we fully make the most of it? What would it look like for each of us here to live in the light of the inheritance that is available to us today? How would that shape our day-to-day lives and our prayer lives and our faith and our expectations of what God can do? In our passage, Paul explains that this comes with the Spirit who brings revelation and wisdom. Each and every one of us here has an inheritance from God, not because of anything that we have done, not because of anything that we could possibly do, but because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. We receive an inheritance of hope the moment that we put our faith in Jesus. We receive an inheritance of riches that will never perish, nor spoil, nor fade far beyond our capacity to imagine, which awaits us in the age to come. And we receive an inheritance of power that is available to you and to me today. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead is available to us by the power of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Our invitation this morning is to receive that inheritance and to live in the light of the inheritance that we have received, which is made possible by the Spirit who gives wisdom and revelation. If you're able, would you stand with me? And I would love to pray for us before we move into a time of worship. And I'd love to invite Alan, if he'd like to come, to join me. I think there are perhaps two invitations here this morning. Perhaps you're here and you've never received that inheritance of hope. You've never made that decision to follow Jesus. And perhaps today, something in you feels like you want to accept that invitation that we all have. And we'd love to pray for you and stand with you in prayer if you would like to do so. Or perhaps you have been a Christian for many years and you know the inheritance that you have. And if that's you, I would love to pray for all of us to more fully understand and comprehend and live in the light of the inheritance that we have received. Yeah, just before Sophie prays, one of the things Sophie was talking about was calling, and our calling is rooted in a relationship. And I don't know where you are this morning, what you would say about your relationship with God, but God's desire is to walk alongside us and to be in relationship. And that may be something that to you can say, yes, I'm, my relationship with God is amazing, it's really close. Or maybe you've never experienced that. You know, Christianity is not about following a set of rules and regulations. It's about a relationship with the God who loves you, who sent his son to die for you. And that's the invitation this morning. As um, Sophie was saying, we have access to it, as whether we choose it. And I'd love to pray that for you, whether it's just to encourage you in your relationship or whether it's for the first time 
or whether you just have that desire to go deeper, you know that it feels like quite mundane, you're just going through the motions. And God's desire is our relationship would be something so exciting and dynamic and something that transforms our lives and the lives of those around us. And um, yeah, if that's you, we'd love to pray for you this morning. Let me pray for us before we move into a time of worship. And during worship, um, a few of us will be available at the front. So if you would like to uh, somebody to stand with you and pray for you, then we are here. We're wearing orange lanyards. I will be, so it will be easy to spot. But let me pray for us. Father, I thank you for this inheritance that is available to us. This inheritance of hope and of riches and of power that all comes from relationship with you. We thank you that you invite us into relationship with you. And if you have never received that inheritance of hope, if you've never said yes to that relationship and you would like to today, there is no pressure, but you're welcome to, to pray along with me, to say sorry for the things that we have done wrong. And thank you for what God offers us with that inheritance. I'm pleased to invite him to come into our lives. So Father, we are sorry for the things that we have done wrong in our life. We thank you for the inheritance of hope that is available to us. We thank you for your forgiveness and your mercy and your grace and your invitation to relationship with you, creator of the universe who knows us completely. We ask you to come into our lives today May we know your presence with us. We thank you that you are with us by your Holy Spirit. We welcome you. Amen. For those of us that perhaps have been a Christian for a long time and we just want to go deeper, as Alan was saying, or to fully understand to fully live in the light of the inheritance that we have re received. Let's, um, let's pray for the Holy Spirit to meet us and to pour out that wisdom and revelation that comes from the Spirit. So Father, we thank you that you are here by your Spirit. We welcome you. And we pray that by your Spirit, with your help, you would help us to fully realize the inheritance that we have, what you give to us. Help us to live in the light of that inheritance today and in the days to come.